Hello everyone and welcome back to another a very nice chess game from 1842 in London, England. And in the chess game we have John Cochrane with the white pieces and his opponent is an unknown chess player. John Cochrane was a Scottish chess master and he was one of the most aggressive and one of the leading chess players in his era. So let's see what happened in this chess game. So I said this chess game happened in London in 1842 and this is London in 1842. A nice engraving about London about those times. A pretty nice historical picture of London from 1842. And you have to see this chess game. A very nice, a very beautiful chess game of John Cochrane. So let's see what happened. E4, that's what happened in the first move. E5 and then d4 and this is known as the center game capturing the pawn and now developing the bishop and then developing the knight and it is transposing into the scotch gambit developing the bishop with check and then pushing the pawn capturing and then castling which is reminding us a very aggressive openings such as simit mora gambit or the danish gambit so kahrain is sacrificing one more pawn Black didn't capture the B pawn because if C takes on B2, then Bishop takes on B2, and White is going to have very active bishops. So D6, asking a question, Bishop goes back, pushing the pawn, and then pushing the pawn, Knight to A5, defending the Bishop, developing, and then Cochrane push the pawn. There is no time for Black for castling. Pushing the pawn for the tempo, Queen takes on C2, capturing the pawn and then knight to c3 and then black castle black is happy at least he has managed to castle but now pinning the knight bishop to g5 by john cochrane i'm pinning but now white has a very strong move white played rook from a to d1 and black played bishop to d4 blocking with the bishop what happens if queen to e7 which looks like a multi-purpose move both defending the queen and defending on f6 but we have knight to e4 and this is looking extremely dangerous well if uh, knight to d5 then queen to c5 but this move is better knight to e4 both attacking the knight and defending on c5 so this is looking extremely dangerous for black so this is why we have bishop to d4 and now rook from f to e1 by jack kahrain targeting the e pawn he can simply take the pawn with the rook because this bishop is pinned. Knight to g4. But now Cochrane played exciting chess. This is what we love from the romantic era of chess. Rook takes on d4. E takes on d4 and then bishop to e7. And at this moment of the game actually black has a very good move. But black didn't find that move. Queen to f4 and this was actually not a good move. What would you do in this position? Can you see the best move for black? Black actually has a very strong move in this position. So this is forking the queen and the rook. And actually after that move, computer engine says it is for about equal. And maybe black is even slightly better because white sacrificed too many pawns. Well, the move is queen to g6, attacking the queen, queen to a4. Then black plays rook to e8. Then white plays knight to d5. And white is doing okay so is black so it is a little bit complex as you can see okay anyway so we have queen to f4 which was not the best move kahrain simply captured the rook and after thinking hard black realized that the compensation is not that simple so because of that black played bishop to f5 what happens if d takes on c3 then rook to e8 is mega dangerous this is mega dangerous and actually i can say that defending is not so easy strangely so well in this position yeah, the bishop is pinned as well so threatening some discovery attacks which is going to be checkmate so defending is very difficult anyway so this is why we have bishop to f5 uh, why not king takes on f8 can you see why this move is a failing move why this move is not working at all
because of queen takes on h7 and defending the checkmate threat is also pretty difficult without losing any material. So this is also looking very, very dangerous. You can see that the bishop is also aiming the king like an arrow. So this is why bishop to f5 but now white has a very strong move and after that move black resigned. Can you see the best move in this position for white? Because after that move black is going to realize that there is no compensation, there is no material compensation and he is losing on the spot. So John Cochrane played one of the most aggressive, one of the most amazing chess players from 1840s and he's also famous because of his Cochrane gambit. Sometimes even at modern chess, even in our modern times, some of the modern chess grandmasters sometimes uses the Cochrane gambit, even in our time. So John Cochrane played, did you see this move? Queen to a4 and black resigned because there is no material compensation, white is a piece up. Why? If d takes on c3, then losing the queen. And if king takes bishop, then what happens then? Now can you see the best move? Actually, this move is very important. This is extremely important move. So can you see the best move for white? Because in this position, the thing is, if you capture the knight with the queen, then black can capture the knight and black is doing okay. Because uh, the pawn is no longer pinned after capturing the knight. So can you see the best move in this position, which is very important? The move is... The move is... <laughs> knight to e2. Did you see this? In between move. After defending the queen, when you see a good move, look for a better one. Well, that's one of the greatest chess quotes of all times by Emmanuel Lesker, isn't it? Then knight from e takes on d4, black has to defend the bishop, and only then you can capture the knight, and white is a piece up. White is a piece up, and black is crying. And thank you very much for watching. This was the pretty instructive chess game of John Cochrane from 1842, London, England. And thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you next time. Take care and bye bye.